Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is iOS 12. It was unveiled today at WWDC. It's beta one for developers. It won't be out for the public beta, usually for a couple weeks until beta two or beta three come out. They want it to be more stable, but with this one, because the focus is stability, and performance, it may be stable enough. Now on my iPhone 10, it was 2.6 gigabytes. That's pretty typical of a full software update. And let's take a look at the build number and then we'll get on to all of the different features. You can see this build is 16A5288Q. And this particular build has a lot of different features. One is under software update, there is now automatic update. So you can flip this on or off if you want it to automatically update as soon as it's available. Also under battery, there should be some updates as well, although I'm not seeing them yet, but there should be more extended. Actually I am before I wasn't when I was checking this out, but you'll see there's some different updates available here and there's more information. So 38 minutes of usage, one minute screen off and show usage time. And there's all the different times that you used each app. So that's pretty nice and brand new. Now, one thing Apple has said is that they're doubling down on performance with iOS 12. It's available on all iOS 11 supported devices. So if you have an iPhone 5S, it's still supported and the same iPads and everything are still supported as well. They claim the apps can be up to 40% faster to load and to use. And also they've optimized the OS so that the CPU can can quickly jump to full performance and back down. Normally CPUs ramp up their performance and come back down. They're saying you can do it instantly since they have their own chipset. And so far there's a little bit of stuttering I've noticed, but I just installed this. So I expect that a little bit so far things work okay. I haven't fully tested it, of course, but let's talk about more of the new features. One thing they've changed is notifications. So if I swipe down, you'll see, I finally have notifications that make more sense. So if I want to swipe them to the right, I can clear them all view or manage. If I go to manage, I can deliver prominently. I have it silently turn off or go to settings. And we have different options here as well. It's finally been updated and that's it for notifications. Now, one of the new things they've done is introduced AR kit two, which is for augmented reality. And one of the examples they gave of how this works and some of the new features it does is a Lego set was on stage. They had two iPads with two users. So someone was looking at it on the table with this iPhone or iPad and another user had a different one. And what they did is interact with it at the same time. And the user on this iPad could see what the other one was doing and vice versa or, or so on. And so you can kind of interact with other people. That's one of the improvements. There's also a new app to measure things. So this is the new measure app. It also has moved the level to the measure app. We'll go to measure and it says, move the iPhone to start. So let's see if we can, oh, it wants me to move it in a rectangular pattern to start. There we go. So now we have a point, we have a point of reference. Let's see. We'll start it here. Let's measure to the other end. And it's saying that that is six inches. If we tap on it, it's telling us it's six inches or 16 centimeters. It's built right in and you can measure other things like this keyboard here. Maybe we'll measure the space bar. And it, you feel haptic feedback. It locks on to when it senses an edge. It says it's four inches long. I haven't measured it with a real tape measure or anything to confirm, but it looks to be legitimate. So that's something that's included. So that's really nice. It's part of augmented reality. And another thing they mentioned around the same time is that they've come up with a new file format for sharing those augmented, augmented reality experiences. They developed it with Pixar and also Adobe is adopting it as well. It's called USDZ. It's for sharing high resolution file formats within augmented reality apps. So maybe you're using that measure app. You want to share it. You'll be able to do that. I guess more easily, although it may take some time before we see that. Now they've updated photos and within photos, there's a new for you tab. And under that tab, it allows you to do different things such as see more search suggestions, things like that. It's nothing really exciting, but it does allow you to share these photos more easily with other people. So maybe you share this with someone else and they have an event they were at at the same location. It knows that securely on the device and asks you if you want to share the photos that you had from that location and ask your friend or whoever you've sent this to the same question it allows you to share events together. So if you're at a family event, maybe a graduation, 
or a wedding or something, you can share those easily back and forth. And it's end to end encrypted and only the phones know about it. So that part's really nice. Now we all expected Siri to get a major update and it didn't really. Siri, they said gets 10 billion requests per month and it can do more things. And they showed off a new app, which I don't find on here called shortcuts and shortcuts is supposed to be like workflow. If you've ever seen the workflow app, Apple bought them and it allows you to create a workflow based on your applications and what you do, but you can ask about it and it recognizes it, but I don't see the app. Tell me about shortcuts. So what it lets you do is maybe set a word that says, Siri, when I'm home, do this. And you can give it a magic word such as I'm home and just tell Siri I'm home and it will know to turn your temperature on, up or down, turn on your lights, maybe do whatever home kit can do for you. Now, it also knows that I have an Apple TV now and it's seeing that and putting that on my control center. They haven't changed this, but they did give it some 3D touch options that are a little bit different. And there's also 3D touch options for some new apps such as Do Not Disturb. So if I 3D touch on Do Not Disturb, I can tell it for one hour until this evening, until I leave this location and it knows that I'm home right now. Or I can schedule it. And if I schedule it, it brings me into the Do Not Disturb settings where I can turn it on, schedule it, and it will also allow us although I haven't seen it yet to tell it there's a nighttime mode that says I'm, I'm in bed. I'm going to sleep. Don't notify me until the morning. It doesn't let you know anything in the, until the morning. And you can do that. Although I don't see it in this particular version. So if we go back to the settings screen, you'll see we have another app here called screen time. Screen time is a way to try and get you to use your phone less. And so you'll see here, it says I've been using it one hour and 42 minutes, although I just installed this not too long ago and it's counting this. So that's kind of interesting. And I think it's been counting it all along and they're just pulling that data now. So if I go into my phone, you'll see I've used it for one hour, 50 minutes. And here's how long I've used each individual app. If I tap on them, I can tell it how long I want to use each app and tell it to let me know if I use more than that. If I go back, you'll see I have downtime. I can schedule different downtime for different thing for the phone in general, and then also different apps. So I can start it whenever I want. I don't want to do that. Also app limits. So you can pick categories and schedule downtime for say games, add set how many hours are allowed per day or delete the limit. Also, you can choose apps that are always allowed and then block content and privacy. So pick a code. And now we have all sorts of content and privacy settings. So that's something that's a little bit new. You'll see some of the icons look a little bit different. Control center, customized controls is there, of course. And let's go down a little bit further. Now they've redesigned some different apps such as news. So let's take a look at that. News is slightly redesigned. It says today we have a spotlight view here and then a browse feature and I'm on Apple news as well, but a browse feature and it looks pretty much the same. So you get the idea, but it's just slightly updated to look a little bit different and it carries to the iPad and Mac as well. And I'm going to do a different video on the Mac, but the iPad is pretty much exactly the same, only it gets news and stocks and voice memos. So let's take a look at stocks. This is the new stocks app. So we'll wait for it to load Hit continue and you'll see it's a little bit different. I don't normally use this app, but it now includes stories. It's got your little ticker at the top and it's just a new design with a dark mode. Although they didn't announce a dark mode for the iPhone only for Mac OS, which is kind of interesting. So maybe we'll see that next year. Let's take a look at voice memos. So this is the new voice memos app. It's really simple. You'll see it has some waveforms for when you're recording your voice. If I hit stop, there it is. You can hit the buttons, edit, duplicate, or share. Very simple and straightforward, but it carries to the iPad and Mac as well. There's a new design for iBooks as well. They've renamed it to Apple Books. And here's books. We'll wait for it to load. And it talks about discovering and things like that. We'll hit continue and it looks completely different. They've redesigned it to be more like the Apple store. You'll see we have our library here. Anything I might have. We've got the bookstore. 
so it looks much more familiar, similar to the App Store. And then you have audiobooks and your search. So that's all built in and looks a little bit different as well. There's a couple bigger features and one of them for me is CarPlay. CarPlay now supports third party navigation. So that means Waze, Google Maps. So we can use whichever one we'd like and I'll try that out and see if it works, but I'm not sure if that's integrated just yet. Now messages got some updates, so let's take a look at those. There's new an emoji and me emoji. We'll hit continue and you'll see I can create my own. And then there's some new ones down here as well. We've got a little T-Rex or a dinosaur, a koala bear, a tiger, and a little ghost. And one thing they announced is that there is tongue detection. So it sort of sees my tongue. I'm not sure if it'll work, but it sees my tongue and should work. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these things. I probably never use them, but the me emoji looks kind of interesting. Let's check that out. If we hit the plus, we can make our own me emoji to make it look like yourself. So the first thing you need to do is pick your face, whether you have freckles or not, your skin tone. Let's see. Oh, and you can adjust it like this. We'll just pick that for now. So it's hairstyle and color. Then you can adjust the color. You have to go all the way down here for the different hairstyles, but I think you get the idea. Different hairstyles, you just pick one. We'll just pick this one for now, I guess. Head shape. You've got different age. And chin and eyes. And the eye colors change in real time. And we'll hit done. So while this doesn't totally look like me, you get the idea. You've got your own me emoji. And that's added in there. And I must note, too, that this is getting really hot while I'm holding this. Back here, it's incredibly warm right now. So there's tongue detection, new an emoji, me emoji, and effects in messages. So let's go down here. So within the camera, if I turn it on, we'll turn it around, and you'll see me talking here. I can use effects with this little button here. We'll turn it on. Maybe we'll pick one of these effects we've got different filters in real time so we're recording real time and it's got those real time filters we'll stop here let's go back to the different filters let's pick maybe this one we can put shapes on there so we can put a shape wherever we want point to something so i think you get the idea there's a bunch of different effects and they'll be more available as things come out but maybe we'll pick uh, we'll pick this one and you can put this sticker here as well. So if you want to use these stickers, they're available and they're all part of messages. Now, probably my favorite feature that came to iOS 12 is group FaceTime. So let's go into FaceTime. It's part of messages as well, but we can access it separately too. Within FaceTime, you'll see that we have a couple effects. We can do the effects within FaceTime or we can add a person. So we have the ability to add a person. Hey, so you're on a video and I'm showing how to do add to FaceTime. Awesome. So are you on iOS 12 yet? I'm not. Okay. So you just hit these three dots in the bottom right, add a person, and then you have a couple different options, up to 32 different people. All right. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. See ya. See ya. So that should give you an idea of how it works, but you can add up to 32 people into group FaceTime now, and it's something we've wanted for a long time. It works across iPad and Mac as well. So those are all the major changes. There's going to be a lot of different changes here and there. As I discover them, of course, I'll let you know. And speed should be greatly improved. And honestly, for a beta, this isn't too bad, the way it's responding. You'll see connect with more friends, get recommendations, those were there before, so I'm not sure why it was doing that, but different app designs I'll be sure to check out. We'll see if there's anything new, and I'm not seeing anything, but for a first beta, this is pretty fast, so it's interesting to see how quick it is. I'm a little disappointed that I don't get to see that new app yet for Siri that lets us do shortcuts and create our own little shortcuts, but maybe it'll be out in the next beta or after that. Hopefully not next year, close to it, like Messages in iCloud was. Let's see if we've got anything more. And there's no dark mode, unfortunately. I know a lot of people wanted that, but I would expect that next year. So I've looked at this briefly. I don't see a whole lot going on, but 
Uh, we'll see if there's anything else notable. And if there is, I'll be sure to do a follow up and tell you all the different new features, but those are the main ones. And hopefully that gives you an idea of what's changed. No new interface changes, but everything else looks good. Let me do a quick geek bench and see how it's going while we're waiting for this to finish its geek bench. This is the iPhone seven plus, And some people have been asking me how fast is it? And so far it seems okay, especially for an early beta. It has the message effects in it. It just won't have the an emoji or the me emoji. So if I go into the camera, you've got your effects on the iPhone seven plus it does the face tracking and everything. Uh, it just doesn't do the an emoji or me emoji. So you've got that built in similar to the clips app and everything else should be in here as well. You've got all of the other features I mentioned, the news redesign, of course, it's going to open now that it's on iOS 12 and take a moment but you've got the news redesign with the spotlight and everything else. All of the other features are on the seven plus the five S that were before just missing. You're just missing an emoji and me emoji. So that's, that's pretty good. Let's wait for this to finish. We'll take a look at it and then we'll wrap things up. The geek bench is finished and you'll see we have 4,261 for single core, 10,483 for multi-core. Let's take a look at the history because I'm not sure it looks like that's, quite a bit better than the previous ones. So 4261 versus 4223, 10 for 483 versus 10 330. Now we can't tell a whole lot about that, but for an early beta so far, it seems fast. I'll be doing a follow up to let you know how battery is and be sure to check the YouTube community page and follow me on Twitter as I do follow ups there as well. And again, I'll leave the link to the wallpaper in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.